welcome to the 2012 OCBC Cycle Singapore, Singapore's largest cycling event. I'm your host, Zhang Tingjun, and we've got a packed highlight show lined up for you today. So sit back and enjoy the ride. It's the best show on two wheels, a three-day cycling extravaganza. From races to rides, the streets of Singapore come alive. When you look at this event, it started four years ago. It was a one-day event. We had 5,300 participants. Uh, we've just kicked off our fourth year. We have close to 11,000 participants registered. We're now a three-day event. And we announced this week that OCBC has re-signed for the next three years. So uh, I guess that's a fair indication that we must be doing something right. It's a great way for us to engage with the community. We prosper in this community. And we've got uh, people coming out from all walks of life, children, adults, um, young folks who are, who are serious riders, and the fact that we've got the professionals out is a television event and quite an interesting sporting event for Singapore. Cycling is a, is a, is a great sport, it's a safe sport, um, but more importantly it involves friends and family um, uniting together and having a great time. The highlight of OCBC Cycle Singapore is the professional criterium. It's Formula One on bikes, under lights. The race features 20 teams comprising more than 70 of the world's best riders. In a sensational finish to last year's Pro Crit, an unheralded Italian stole the show. Omar Pradazzo of the Androni Giacatoli team seemingly came from nowhere to blitz the field down the final stretch. He's back to defend his crown alongside 2010 champion Ben Kirsten and 2009 winner David Pell. But the name on everyone's lips this year is Robbie McEwen. The Australian is a cycling legend, a multiple national champion. McEwen is also a 12-time stage winner of the Tour de France. On the eve of the race, the star attraction fronted a packed press conference at the Conrad Centennial Singapore. Had a quick look around, uh, around the sort of bay out there and uh, took in some of the sights. And uh, I really like Singapore. It's really, really clean and well organised and you know, beautiful buildings and a really nice city. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad to be back. McEwen won't have it all his own way, of course. There's a host of young guns looking to overtake him. I have a good teammate with me, so uh, of course we try to win. And uh, United Healthcare is a Criterium team, so, oh yeah, Criterium team, we... We can do really good in the criteriums and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. We had a good uh, training camp in Mallorca with Team Rally GIC and um, you know we've done a little bit of speed work and uh, just working together as a unit. So it's, um, it's our, one of our first races of the year, which is always a challenge, but um, I think we're ready for it. It's the strongest ever professional field assembled for the OCBC Cycle Singapore. So let's head trackside for a look at the circuit. The race starts outside the famous F1 pit building here in Singapore. It's a long straight before the riders make their way out into a new section of the course that will loop down through the tunnel, down behind the pit building, and then a sharp left turn into the finish. Now let's join our voice of cycling, Phil Liggett. As the klaxon goes, the riders get underway now. I know the referees and everybody a little bit worried about this first circuit, but thankfully the rain has stayed away. It's been raining virtually all day. You can see probably a little bit of water around the circuit, but it's drying out steadily, and let's hope it stays away for the next 90 minutes, because that's about the length of time it will take today uh, for the riders. They'll be anxious to get their noses around this course in first place. The big figure, number seven, just going through camp. There's Luke Derbridge. The world under 23 champion, the new time trial champion of the elite of Australia. He won that title in Leamouth in, uh, in Victoria in the month of January and also a reigning world track champion as well. So he's uh, here, I suspect, but don't know, to support Robbie McEwen to try and get Robbie that fairy tale result today. McEwen himself knows that he has huge problems with one or two of the youngsters he is, giving them 20 years for goodness sake. Uh, because Robbie will be 40 years old this year in June. 
That's the right hand turn now as they go down into the OCBC tunnel. Disappear briefly from our shot as they climb out of the tunnel. They've got themselves off to quite a quick start. We can expect a 50 kilometer an hour average speed today, I would suspect, because the boys who've got the good start at the front will try to keep the pressure on to stop the boys at the back getting up here because they know this course uh, could deliver one or two surprises. You can see the, the water from the heavy rain being a tropical country. It has been quite heavy. It's very warm, uh, pleasantly so, one has to say but the water still sitting on the ground there, making this course possibly a little bit slippery. This is the worst for the slip. As you can see, the leaves still lying on the surface a little bit. And then they've got this sharp right, and then we make our sharp left as we enter into the Volvo curve to bring them into the home straight. This is around the back side of the F1 pit building, and it's a full horseshoe left-hander, this one, and then they'll line up for that finishing straight, but it won't be for a little while yet. Just over two minutes for this opening lap, so they haven't set any records here. They've treated it very sensibly as they now head up to complete this opening lap. And it looks like we might have indeed uh, right on the front there. It is Daniel Holloway from the rally team of Great Britain, but he himself an American, two-time circuit race champion. He loves this sort of racing, looking under his arm there. Christian House was up there too, now the big boy in the centre in black, and also saw boy Van Poppel making a good start. With the race underway, let's cycle through the highlights. Luke Derbridge currently leads the chasing pack. Luke Derbridge with a big turn of speed, the under-23 world champion going through now on the front of the peloton. It looks as though uh, McEwen has got his team to work hard right from the gun. And he was chased through there by Rafa Condesharp's Ben Grenda. And if the name sounds familiar, well, Ben's dad, uh, Mike, was a world, uh, was an Olympic champion, rather, back in Los Angeles in 1984. There's gaps forming at the back because of the pressure which has been applied by the top professionals in this race. Still Derbidge driving that pack through. The man they uh, call with the big engine. Uh, this is very typical of him. Boy Van Poppel has got himself up into second place. And the name we should pay attention to this early on in the race, and not many people will know him, is Steel Von Hoff of the Chip Chipotle uh, First Solar team. He's a young new professional, but has had a very, very good start to the season. He got a medal in the Australian Elite Circuit Race Championships, which were in... Um, the gold mining town of Ballarat about five six weeks ago now it started uh, mid-January and he's a surprisingly good rider at this type of racing it's all about speed recovery and the ability to lift your pace when the going gets tough and that looks to me as though we're not sure the riders quite prepared now to lift that field up either as the going gets tough as they go around the chicane again only lap number three and now they're getting it down to just over two minutes a lap I think they'll come down to much quicker than that uh, this is uh, uh, Beppu the Japanese rider he's not quite in the same colors as Robin McEwen and Luke Derbidge uh, but he's still a member of the Green Edge cycling team from Australia but he is the Japanese champion so he gets to wear the Japanese colors as national champion here he comes now settled into a good high-speed rev and he's causing the reaction from the field here now this speed has really got to grips with the course very early on and this could cause quite a splinter in the peloton it is possible it won't be a sprint by the end look at the gaps now forming at the in right in the middle of the peloton as Beppu uh, goes through there now to drag them out there are five sprint laps throughout the pro crit first up lap five so it's one lap to go to the first sprint and the man setting the pace there was uh, Giordano Racing Team's Mike Northy from New Zealand in the orange just checking out who's daring to come up with him Luke Derbidge is there Christian House is paying close attention Paul Odlin was there and the blue jersey of Paul Van Poppel as well and trying to get on terms is Dan Holloway because that klaxon means the first sprint coming up now which is 5-3-2 and one point for the first four riders back across the line in the opening Spectrum Worldwide sprint competition 
which carries a $3,000 first prize for the riders who gain the most points over the five sprints uh, during the period of the race. Long straight line as they disappear down the OCBC tunnel which has this very nasty adverse camber. They, they might like to take the right-hand corner, but the, it'll kick them over to the left and our right as we look, as you see them coming out the tunnel. As they start to dig for the walls to finish now, they're, they're making ground here, but they actually need to be in the first four to five. Boy Van Poppel is on the front there. One or two very serious looking faces on this race now because the pressure's gone on right from the start here. Christian House trying to chase through. McEwen looks to me as though he might be sitting this one out and saving himself. He's quite a way down the line here as they line up for this very first sprint. Paul Odlin, I think it is, from the Subway team, who's got himself on the front. And uh, Graham Miller, who's looking after this team, said, expect trouble with my boys because they're going really, really well. They've already been racing a long time back home in New Zealand. As they line up for the sprint now, is he going to hang on here or are the sprinters going to swamp him on the line? And it looks as though it might well be as they come up to the line here. It was House getting over Odlin on the line. Christian House takes the first points in the Spectrum King of the Sprints and the overall standings in the professional criterion. Paul Odlin and Fumi Beppu are in hot pursuit. You're watching the OCBC Cycle Singapore 2012. Stay with us. More coming up after the break. Robbie McEwen touched down in Singapore on Wednesday and was promptly whisked away in a waiting Volvo. Upon his arrival at the Conrad Centennial Singapore, I sat down for a chat with the man they call the Pocket Rocket. Now Robbie, you are one of the most successful cyclists in the world today. And what is it do you think about you that sets you apart? What makes you a winner? I think just it's it's in a person that you, you want to win stuff. You just you're born competitive I think and from when I was a kid everything I did I wanted to be good at it when I go out to, to do something if the if the aim is to win I'm, I'm gonna you know give it everything to, to try and win it's just such a special feeling when you win a race and you know I learned that at a young age and uh, it really got me in its grip and so then you're prepared to, to do all the hard work make the sacrifices that you know when you love doing something so much it doesn't feel like a sacrifice I think that's the the key to it all and you've earned the reputation of being a fierce competitor on the bike and out in the field. Is that who you are off the bike as well? Uh, no, I can, I, I, off the bike, um, I'll, I'll be competitive, I'll, I'll try really hard, but you probably won't see that fierce competitor. But when I'm on the bike and I know that's, that's really what I'm built for, um, that's why I've been put here, then yeah, you'll, you'll see me give it absolutely everything and, and sometimes it is a, a case of uh, Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and uh, if you can win the race and you've done it fairly then I think you've got to do yeah you've got to find the limits of, of everything. And what about your nickname Pocket Rocket? Who coined that nickname for you? I don't actually know who coined that that uh, nickname but I, I suppose it's it's fairly apt. Um, I'm not a very big guy and and I've, I've always been pretty quick and, uh, and explosive, so I actually don't mind it. It's one of the better ones I've heard. I've been called much worse things. Earlier in the week, the OCBC Singapore Continental Cycle Team took to the streets of Singapore 
As they explore the multitude of cycling paths and bikeways the city has to offer. We hitched a ride with Junaidi Hashim, Ahmad Haider Anwar and Darren Lowe. Definitely more can be done to uh, encourage more people to cycle. Uh, recent years, uh, they have built more park connectors, uh, which I think is good. It's, uh, cycling is more popular is because of the, uh, for all ages, uh, healthy lifestyle and uh, there's more bike shops in Singapore. It's a great way to uh, exercise instead of running where uh, the speed is so slow. For cycling, you can go much higher speed based on your own effort. Let's return to selected highlights now from the professional criterium. New Zealander Tom Scully leads the peloton as we check out the second sprint lap. Tom Scully has taken him through there for Chipotle and he's going to have a little dig now. He's the other member of this team, Scully, and deciding to see if they'll let him go just a little bit. Only 22 years of age, turned professional last year, Tom Scully. And for the first time, they've given a gap to the attacker. Batazzo went through right on his wheel and didn't uh, go with him on the gap. He sat up and backed the field off. But the Androni Giacotello team from, of Batazzo, all four of them on the team, are all riding together. So expect a good team result here and expect a little plan being hatched maybe for a bit later on little group try to move clear so as we see and, and we've just seen Batazzo go through and in fact he's pulled into the pits so I believe he's got a flat tire well he's lucky because he will get a lap out now he's only allowed it to do this once uh, so he's taken his card and played it uh, as we see Tom Scully still clear and we might well see Batazzo uh, push back into the race when the race comes through at the end of this sprint that rule by the way does not apply in the last three laps of the race if you have an incident then I'm afraid you must retire so last time around it was Christian House who's getting himself right into the front again looking for the points again five for the winner Paul Odlin is still in there, but Tatsu won't be in there because he had a puncture, which is rather unlucky, which means he won't score now in this competition, and he was well placed to do so. Scully gets the five points clearly as he goes over the line, and a very tight sprint there with House getting involved. It looked like uh, Bernie Salzberger may have got the better of Christian House, and the fourth place going to Paul Odlin. Green Edge Cycling continued to make inroads, but there was trouble looming for Fumi Beppu. Miss Fumi Beppu, he is the lone attacker now, and he's wondering where everybody's gone here as he comes down into the home straight to complete lap number 15, which will take him through just on 25 kilometers covered now. And he's settling in, and the big danger is this man can ride very quickly when he's alone and if they allow him to settle into a rhythm he'll hold 40 45 kilometers now all by himself he's got a good lead on the straight and this has taken all the pressure off McEwen now because that's his teammate up front if they want him back they're gonna have to go now what happened here it looks as though he's now searching here he's come around he's got a problem as the leader has a problem now the judge is gonna have to work this out because the rule says you go back in the race exactly where you come out but if he's in the lead by himself he may be put back in the main field end of attack or he's got to get on and go and he's asking the question what do I do the answer is I don't really know Beppu because they don't know where he is when he's on his own up front so they may just return him to the peloton and he's also taken his only allowed lap out of the day well that was really really bad luck a perfect tactic play by Green Edge and stopped by the punches the trouble is that when you get rain on the course uh, and it looks like he's opting to take the lap out now whether he wanted to or not he's not much choice really let's have a look again here he comes this is an action replay here as he and when he looked down like that I think he realized then his tire was wandering all over the road and he sensed something has gone wrong here now he knows he's got the problem what do I do 
Now he had a lead of about 14, 15 seconds, but I don't think the referees would have had a clock on him, although they would have the time over that finishing line. And I think you'll find they put him back in the race with the main field. Time will tell. Anyway, I'm back with the leaders now on the road as we go out on lap number 16. It was Matt Cronshaw of the Giordano Racing Team who led over the chasing group with Peterson, Derbidge, Goff, McEwen not too far off the front. They won't believe that bad luck here. That really was bad luck. But the wet road surface picks up the bits of grit as the fielder now heading round the back of the stands again to come through to complete lap 16. Keep an eye on what happens now uh, with Fumi Beppu. But I think you'll find they have to put him in the race with the field. Now we are hearing from the pits. They've let him out. As I said, he had a lead of 15, 16 seconds. They've timed him 16 seconds and they've let him go. Well, that's a good decision. So it's the same pressure remains now. The peloton are still chasing the champion of Japan. They gave him back his 16 seconds. Now, if he has the same problem again, he won't get any of that, I'm afraid. He will uh, he'll be, have to chase or retire from the race. We're only allowed one defect uh, during the event. So that then puts him out in front once again. Boy Van Poppel headed the field through in the blue. Leonardo Giordani, Luke Derbidge, Christian House and Wesley Goff uh, were the boys at the front. Goff's moved up since into second place here now. So out in front is the champion of Japan. He made his move a couple of laps ago. Here, one or two gears grinding into position on off that right-handed bend at the moment. Last rider going down. It looked like it uh, might have been one of the Chipotle riders in the black colours. Well, everybody looking over the shoulders to see who else is going to come. The same names we've talked about willing to keep this pace high. A lot of riders, though, are not under pressure waiting till a bit of fire comes out of these riders again house looks over to see if anybody's going to counter the attack here from subway let's move towards the end of lap number 17 now beppu has to be up ahead in the home straight just at the moment and there he is he's just swung into the home straight gritting his teeth the crowd now getting behind him here as he, they've seen what's happened to him. He may have lost a little bit of that lead, but not a lot. What he's trying to do here is not win the race, but force the riders to chase him and use their energy. As he goes out now, on to lap number 18. Three sprint laps down, two to go. More action from the professional race coming up. But let's change gears for a moment. There's a real carnival atmosphere here off the track. And here's a little taste. Anyone can ride at the OCBC Cycle Singapore, amateur or pro, young or old. 
But if you want to join the ride and don't know where to start, follow me. It can be a little overwhelming, especially if you're new to the sport. So how do you decide what bike is best for you? I asked the experts to put me in the driver's seat. I would say it depends on individual preference and interest. Someone who likes to go for road bike, who likes to go for speed, long distance ride, road bike would be suitable for park connectors, off-road riding, probably all-terrain bike or mountain bike would be just nice for them. Uh, of course with a cheaper bike, a more expensive bike, you'll get a smoother ride, smoother operation. Then uh, with a cheaper bike, definitely the bike will be much more heavier. It won't be as smooth as the expensive bike. The cheapest range is from $300 and up to $20,000. Now as you can see, there are so many bikes and so much equipment. But Salem has been kind enough to show me around the store. And now, I think it's time for me to get kitted out. Well, I've got my shoes, my helmet, and my bike ready to hit the road. Now let's head back to the professional criterium where race favorite Robbie McEwen leads the peloton in a three-man breakaway. Tom Scully now revving it up here. Looking for a place two in the Olympic Games in London in August. McEwen just happy to be there, but all three of the Green Edge riders have been on the attack and Derby just got himself up into second place here and will not be helping in the pursuit. Well, this attack coming on lap 18. Chase group of three riders as well, including Friedman, Cronshaw, Wesley Goff. Looks as though uh, there's a little regrouping of the main peloton. Out of the tunnel once more. We head out onto lap 21. Tom Scully, Boy Van Poppel, McEwen, Friedman, Cronshaw, Goff are the, the aggressors on that lap. Heading towards 34 kilometers covered now. Now these guys have got themselves a gap on the field and they know there's three chasers coming up and it looks as though they might uh, join them here. This is This will be a welcome situation. Uh, as they are joined by three riders because this gives a nice workmanlike group now swinging into the home straight coming through to the wards the end of lap 21 It's going to give us six riders in the lead, and uh, they've joined almost here at the sprint point. We've now got Scully, McEwen, Van Poppel, and they've now been joined by Matthias Friedman of Germany and Champion System, Matt Cronshaw of the Giordano Racing Team, and Wesley Goff of the Subway Team from New Zealand. It's a very mixed international breakaway, this. Cronshaw and Friedman, two riders have just shared the effort at the front. Tom Scully comes through and puts the pressure on Cronshaw swung off as well Scully now followed through there by Wesley Goff and then that Van uh, Poppel but the riders can still see them up this straight it's about a 350 meter a gap between them this is all that's left of the race behind and so it is now the team from Giordano from uh, yes uh, uh, Vino Ferrezi who's trying to bring this race back together they haven't got a man in the breakaway they're paying the price and neither has last year's winner either uh, the Androni Giacatoli team of Batazzo, they've got a chase. They suddenly sense that there's an awful lot of riders shadow boxing now. Luke Derbidge going through in the black top to his jersey, open mouthed, uh, very happy with the way things are going just now. It was uh, Risi Bitti of uh, Farnese Venus Ella Italia leading through from his teammate Giordani. Then Beppu blocking it with Derbidge. Then Subway's Paul Odlin also blocking it. 
and Fratini also blocking it because they're the teammates of riders in the breakaway they're going to become a little frustrated back in that main field just at the moment I think as we head up towards one hour of racing and this time will be the sprint on the line as we go through lap 27 and 44 kilometers the man in black who's uh, slipped down to fourth wheel here as they whirl the way around the back of the F1 pit building into the home straight he's put himself in a perfect position here Tom Scully uh, to take five points he's the youngster there fourth in line looking for five points and this could put him in with a very very good chance with only one sprint to come of picking up the three thousand uh, dollars first prize so Scully is not gonna uh, he's gonna go in late and here he comes now now the other riders look as though they're not gonna challenge him here oh well boy Van Poppel by my reckoning uh, pipped him on the line he never got over the top Scully will get second still gets three points though Cronshaw third Wesley Goff I think it was there in fourth place so Scully keeps that lead and uh, at the end of that sprint uh, I I stand to be corrected but I think he will have won the competition with that I think that was the fifth sprint and the fifth sprint lap it most certainly was which means that Tom Scully will be crowned the spectrum king of the sprints meanwhile the big prize is still up for grabs in the pro criterium with a six-man breakaway group dominating proceedings more to come later in the show in the wee small hours of Sunday morning Thousands of people from all walks of life descended on the F1 pit building for the ride of their lives. Let's take a look. It takes a lot of dedication to get up at 4 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Yet thousands of cycling enthusiasts did just that for the 59km Super Challenge. Been training hard for like weeks for this. I'm excited and I'm ready to go. It's healthy, it's environmentally friendly. It's, uh, it's just good fun. Oh, we're looking forward to representing the team well in this, in, in this OCBC Cycle Singapore. If 59 kilometers sounds a little bit too much like hard work, there were other non-competitive rides like the 39 kilometer challenge and 24 kilometer community ride. Even David Connor, CEO of OCBC Bank, the event's title sponsor, put the wheels in motion. All told, close to 11,000 people took to the streets of Singapore. Well, I think it has definitely raised the consciousness of uh, the cycling community and the non-cycling community of how great this sport is. So I hope that this event will continue to grow, not just here, maybe in future they even have uh, different rides in the different communities and everybody coming together on this day to ride a bike. It was good, it was challenging, but there were times that we wanted to give up, but we pushed on all the way and it felt good. We're here at the Tiger Bar Massage area and with 11,000 riders taking part in the event, as you can imagine, there are a few aches and pains. Cycling is a serious business for some people. For others, not so much. Now, I love the outfits. Tell me, you know, what was it like riding in these outfits out there in the sun this morning? What was that experience like? It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience for us. It's quite fun, actually. You should try it. This is my first time and it's very fun. First time loving it, hell yeah. It's cool man, really cool. Most heartwarming was this brave group of men who prove there are no barriers when it comes to cycling. The Blind Co Cyclist program connects visually impaired riders with sighted cyclists in a tandem ride. I, a, a front rider was very good, he was like telling me, okay, we're going to go up the uh, slope, we pedal harder, and then when we go down the slope, we say, okay, like, uh, go slow and, and all that, or rest. So it was a very wonderful ride. Uh, it's a good experience for me, and this, this is the first time I'm taking part. There was a new addition to this year's event, the Business Times Corporate Charity Ride, which raised over $100,000 for Dover Park Hospice. Now first, I must thank the organizers, OCBC Bank and Spectrum Worldwide, for agreeing to include this uh, Business Times Corporate Charity Ride as part of their already impressive lineup. Oh, the impact is uh, fantastic, uh, very great because the, the money that is raised will go towards subsidizing uh, our patients. A lot of our patients actually don't pay anything, any fees. And I think this amount will help us a lot in terms of our fundraising.
okay? Don't be afraid. It's just family day here at the OCBC Cycle Singapore 2012. And what does that mean exactly? Rides for kids of all ages. Whether on three wheels or two, there are over 1,000 happy and not so happy faces at the 100 meter tricycle ride on Saturday. Even the parents got in on the action. It's hard work. Harder, it's probably harder work for us than it is for them. Not really, but no, she's only just started riding. She got a bike for Christmas and I'm really proud of her for going through and all the crowd and everything. So I'm happy it's Larry. So. It's very fun. It's it wonderful. Great. It was great. It was great looking at her crossing the line. Yeah? As the toddlers took a breather, the pit lane was cleared for the mighty Savers rides, catering for kids from 5 through to 9 years of age. And as dusk settled on the F1 pit building, 10 to 12 year olds took part in the Junior Challenge. The objective of the 30 minute ride was simple, to go as fast as you could. I'm here with John Herity, team manager of Rafa Condor Shop. Now, John, there's a lot of food on this table. Uh, who is it for? This is for the for the riders. This is probably what one rider would consume in a day. For for breakfast, lunch, or is this sort of spread out throughout the day? Yeah, that's that's going to be spread out throughout the day. Pretty much, they're going to burn around about six thousand calories a day. Which for you, you're probably going to only eat about three thousand calories a day. So yeah, they're going to consume all that in one day. Breakfast, they're going to be starting off with uh, some porridge, some oats. Uh, that's what we call it in, uh, in Great Britain. So, yeah, porridge oats is what we have. Then they'd have some bread, sometimes a little bit of rice as well. And then a little bit later on, probably about, uh, they'll take breakfast and about an hour and a half after that, they'll do what they call a race meal. And a race meal will consist of a few, mo a few more uh, bits of pasta and also uh, an omelette of some sort. What about pre-race? So if, if you're just talking about the hour or two before a race, would they eat at all during that period? Yeah, they'll sip on drinks. So this is exactly how much they drink during the course of a day. For, for tomorrow's night's criterium, uh, which only takes you know, an hour, they're going to take up around about six litres of water in a day. Six litres of water in a day for, easy, for a race that's easy. an hour and a half. That's right, that's right. Now that is a lot of water. It is. In the race itself, they're going to be taking probably about a litre and a half as well. So it's quite a lot. It's not easy to drink that much just when you're riding. In fact, to eat all that amount of food during the course of a day is going to be pretty tough for somebody. Well, thank you very much, John. And there you have it. Now you know what exactly it goes into the breakfast of a champ. Time now to whet your appetite for the professional criterium. And things are certainly heating up as we enter lap 33. The six-man breakaway group are still dictating terms. So let's go back to Phil Liggett. The lead is unassailable. One minute's lead. Five laps to go to the end. One of these six will take out the $12,500 first prize. Boy Van Poppel brings them through. Followed by Matt Cronshaw again. The same duo driving them up the home straight as they have done lap after lap. Wesley Goff, the Kiwi Olympian. Will be going to London, he hopes, in August. They almost look lonely out there on the far side of the circuit right now. Waiting now to see the peloton go through. But I think they've already resigned themselves to the fact that they can't possibly catch up with this express train today. Here comes the peloton once more always being slowed down teammates on the front once again this might well be confirmed as a minute now as the clock continues on it's gone through a minute in fact it's gone out to about a minute and eight seconds uh, as they came through that time so they're still pulling away from the field here on the long straights they might start to catch a glimpse of the back of the field well, I don't think these six boys expected a result like this. And McEwen has read it right in the leading group. The boys know what they've got. Trouble in the shape of the pocket rockets uh, tagged on to the back at the moment. After the great work by his Green Edge team, by uh, Fumi Beppu and by Luke Derbidge to keep the face hard. The tactics suddenly produced McEwen in the breakaway with Tom Scully. They were rapidly joined by Matthias Friedman, Wesley Goff, Matt Cronshaw, and the six were gone. 
this time as they come through now they're going to see four laps to the finish now 54 kilometers completed four to go and there's nobody else in this race now the winner and all of the podium is up front up the home straight once again they'll start to think about who is the best man in this breakaway now who can out with whom as they come through on lap number 34 boy van poppel slips away to the back tom scully the man that started it all drives through hasn't slowed down not once since he got himself into this breakaway wesley goff trails him through followed by McEwen. these riders strong all of them not one has missed a turn at the front they've contributed that's why they've got more than a minute on the field Goff comes through, McEwen pops up out of the OCBC tunnel as we head towards Volvo corner towards the end of the circuit it is going to be a crucial corner as we knew it always would be this is the peloton coming around Volvo at the moment uh, they're seeing four laps to go but they are now an awful long way behind they are a minute and four seconds and counting since the leaders went through and in fact they're going through a minute and ten one minute and ten seconds behind with a lap time just outside two minutes they can't possibly bridge a half a lap this has been an exceptional ride by some very aggressive professionals here tonight the dark skies of Singapore warm though as it is these boys have enjoyed their race boy Van Poppel takes them through the chicane again now as they head on towards lap 34 end 55 kilometers covered this time they will see uh, three laps to go now they'll be thinking differently they'll be thinking about every corner how to outwit the rivals which line to take as they make the final approach because these six are going to come to the line together there's nobody going to get clear of these boys at three to go tom scully drives them through looking across at wesley goff so it's a battle for the top six in the professional criterium the conclusion is coming up later in the show the professionals weren't the only riders under the spotlight on Friday night. Let's check out some of the action from the other Criterium events. Thomas Wiegand had all the right moves in the Masters Criterium. The 46-year-old German had been training for more than 12 months and he led from the front for much of the race. Wiegand blitzed the chasing pack to take the checkered flag ahead of the Malaysian duo Nora Fandi Rosli and Sai Kyung Leung. I had a little bit of problems the last four weeks. I have a training base and I was cycling with my guests, so I had to do their training. It was not really the training for the event here, so I'm not really happy, but it works. In the women's category, local rider Dina Chan captured the checkered flag, just as she had done back in 2010. Chan narrowly edged out fellow Singaporean Serene Lee. I'm very happy uh, to be a Singaporean and winning in uh, the OCBC Cycle Singapore. Yeah, the competition was tough. Uh, Serene Lee is a very good rider, so I'm really happy to be able to win on a fair competition. In Friday's final amateur race, the men's open criterium, it was a former amateur world champion who prevailed. 35-year-old Chaco Kupins from the Netherlands narrowly beat Saiful Anor and Karu Azizi in an exciting tussle from start to finish. A fraction of a second was all that separated first from second place over 26 laps.
bikes of all shapes and sizes. Just some of the things that they have here at the Cycling and Lifestyle Village. They've got everything related to cycling and I mean everything. If shopping is your thing or you just wanted to take a break from the heat, the F1 pit building was the place to be on the weekend. So what do you think? Is it me? With plenty of bargains to be had, exhibitors were kept busy on the registers all day. We're heading into the home stretch of the professional criterium. One of six riders will win it. The only question is, who has the stamina to break free from the pack? Here's Phil Liggett to take us through to the finish line. That's a very good move by Matt Cronshaw. Maybe that tells us he can't sprint, he can't take on the likes of McEwen or Goff or Scully. So he's going to have to try and win alone. There's a reaction from Goff. He wants help. McEwen willing to go through. Friedman perhaps looking a little bit stressed as he holds on to the back wheel of Robbie McEwen. This is a great move by Matt Cronshaw, the young British youngster here, 23 years of age. As he disappears into the new stretch of road, he'll soon be in at the OCBC tunnel. But it looks as though Friedman has put a special effort in here. Cronshaw comes out of the tunnel, well he goes into the tunnel actually, as he makes the sharp right-hander, they've closed it down right on the 90 degree right turn there. Matt Cronshaw waits to regroup, he'll need a few deep breaths too after that effort. The bell next time around. The peloton, an attack by Luke Derbidge from the peloton here, trying to make it a good night for Green Edge as he now stretches free to attack now because they're not going to catch his teammate or the breakaway as they go through with two laps to go. The man with the big engine, world under 23 road race champion Luke Derbidge shows his colours at the front. Meanwhile, at the front, Tom Scully, the man that started it all on lap number 18, 18 laps ago. Does a hard turn at the front and then checks out. Did it hurt anybody? Wesley Goff uh, goes through. McEwen, as they come round now towards the penultimate time around Volvo Bend. Next time will be the finish. And each and every one of these breakaways know now it's going to be a six-man sprint for the line and the big money on offer. They've taken out all of the major prizes here with the six of them escaping. One lap to go as the bell will sound in the home straight here. Six attacking riders going out for their 19th lap in the lead. And with a lead now of well in excess of one minute, this has been a demonstration of strength. Wesley Goff, who hopes to go to London and ride for New Zealand in the team pursuit, where he really could medal out in the Olympic Games, now thinking more of winning the Cycle Singapore Classic here, the o OCBC event in its fourth year. McEwen, 17 season a pro, goes into the last lap in the front again. As he now seeks out the tunnel. He also might seek out a few back wheels because he doesn't want to be on the front at this stage of the race. It's all about now six riders and nobody else here. Just slowing it down slightly. Matt Cronshaw also thinking. And now this is the expected tag match. Who is going to hit the front and drive into the wind? What little wind there is. There's hardly a breeze. Most of the wind's being created by the riders here. The peloton gets the bell as well. It's team rally who continue to drive this race towards its finish. They're racing for seventh place now in the peloton. As we rejoin the leaders, Tom Scully drives at the front. Still determined to get a big result here, and it looks like he might for Chipotle. Long, long turn here by Tom Scully. Well, this is going to blunt his sprint as he tries to drive them off his back wheel. Boy Van Poppel looking very cool in second place. McEwen sits in third place. Friedman is fourth. Cronshaw's moved to the back for the moment. Wesley Goff is second from the back. They head up to this vital corner now, the Volvo bend. And it's Tom Scully, the man that started it all, is taking them into this last bend as they race up to the finishing line now. 
A lap rider in front. The race is behind now as Scully leads them out and Boy Van Poppel comes. And the, now it is McEwen who's trying to come off his wheel. Robbie McEwen is going to take this victory on the line. He's never not won a race in any one of 17 seasons of racing and his last will be no exception. Robbie McEwen has taken the day out with a tremendous turn of speed. An absolutely fairy tale finish here in the OCBC Singapore Criterium. A win for Robbie McEwen. In second place will be Boy Van Poppel. In third place, Matthias Friedman. Coming into the event, everyone was talking about having a sprint finish, but uh, in these wet conditions, you just had to ride aggressively. And I was uh, fortunate to have very good teammates covering a lot of breaks in the beginning and then put me in a position to, to also attack. I got away in a good group and we worked very, very well together. So credit to the other guys who are in the group. Uh, everyone just didn't miss a beat, made sure we, we won the race and then could fight it out amongst us. So just happy to, to get the win. And confirmation of the Spectrum King of the Sprints, it's Tom Scully who takes top spot with 13 points ahead of Boy Van Poppel, Christian House and Fumi Beppu. It's been another fantastic three days of cycling action, but we're here at the finish line of the OCBC Cycle Singapore 2012. Thanks for joining us, and remember, anyone can ride.